title of our podcast, the name of our podcast is Mindful Leadership Beyond Borders. And today we want to discuss customer service in different borders in different countries. And uh, Marion was born in uh, Germany and has a lot of experience in Germany and clearly living in the U.S. is very conversant with North American customer service. So I would like to turn the microphone over to Marion for her to discuss customer service differences in different countries. And I hear you have a great story to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a funny story because when I first came to the US, I was used to the level of customer service in Germany and that was entirely normal to me. I wasn't expecting much. You go to a store, you pack up your own stuff. And I kind of did that in the beginning too. When I was in the US, I would pack up my groceries and they'd say to me, well, you know, you don't have to do that. We'll do that for you. And I would be <laughs> feeling very pampered. And so after a few years being in the US, I relocated again back to Germany. And uh, for those of you that know the US lifestyle, there are lots of pedicure and manicure studios. It's a service culture through and through. Mm -hmm. And especially like years ago, perhaps potentially even more so than it is today. And so I went back to Germany and I thought, well, how hard can it be to find a nail studio? So I started calling up places and I finally found one and uh, that was close to me that was the first challenge even though I was living in a city I wasn't living in the middle of the countryside and but it seemed to be much more challenging than it was in in the U.S. and so I, I called up that one nail studio and it was the funniest situations even though I didn't find it very funny at the time because I asked and she said and she said, well, are you going to bring your own color? And I said, what do you mean by that? Because I was used to going somewhere and they would have like the whole shelves of nail polish and everything. So that was the first thing. Okay, I'll bring my own color uh, because they didn't have nail polish. And then she said, just make sure you take off your old nail polish. And I said to her, what do you mean by that? <laughs> because I'm coming to the nail studio, so you will do that, I thought. And she said, no, no, I am allergic. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean by that? Because I thought I'm coming to the nail studio, so you would take off the polish, you would take care of my feet, and then you put on new color. Long story short, it was such an experience as to what our expectations are towards, in this case, service. When we go somewhere, what we are used to, what we tolerate, and what we not. And in this instance, I said, I, I, I think, you know, thank you very much, but no, thank you very much, because that was not the experience I wanted to have. And so I continued on, and, you know, this story could go on and on. It wasn't a great experience. And it made me realize that they're obviously a business and they had plenty of clients, but their expectations were very different to my expectations because of what I knew coming from a culture that is all about service. Mm -hmm. And so two takeaways, one is that what we feel it should be is what translates our satisfaction or not. And really that intercultural component that it comes down to like different ways of doing things, different perceptions of what it should be. And uh, so that that's a topic I could talk about forever. But I don't know, have you, Betska or Raj, had a similar experience? Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I, you know, I'd like to, I, I lived in uh, London, England for two years and Paris, France for two years and Bern, Switzerland. And what was coming to my mind as a story was going to a restaurant in Paris, France, right, where I live there. And my goodness, having even your uh, typical average restaurant in Paris, you get amazing service. Mm. You know, you are treated with like royalty, whereas here, you know, someone plunks a, uh, a sandwich in front of you or whatever, there's 
it's not done with love. But even in the, the middle class mm-hmm. restaurants, the waiters have got a cloth over their arm. And when they present the food, it's done with so much love. And, you know, that to me is service. And you can bring your dog. Mm. You know? Mm. So, you, you know, you mentioned two things, Mary, and that, that it's the experience experience we're going for I loved going to French restaurants and then when I came back home to Canada unless it's a high-end restaurant it, it's kind of ho-hum the French and many of the Europeans like the Italians and the mm-hmm. Belgian people uh, restaurant customer service is superb but in other cases as in in, in your mm. in yours Marion it, it wasn't so great so it's it's that experience what are what do people want as an experience from your business you know, what you what know do they what, want to pay for what i'm thinking of hearing you talk about the french restaurant there is a level of grace that comes with that there's a level of pride mm. there's a level of confidence and 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 proud you know, mm-hmm. but being proud about mm-hmm. what we put out there mm-hmm. and in, from service levels, particularly like in this case, it's service industry, restaurants or otherwise, but even translating that into other workplaces, it's like, are we delivering something, a service, a piece of work, a project with pride? Mm-hmm. Or are we just slapping it on the table? Well, you know, thank you for that, because it reminded me that in Europe, when you are a waiter or a waitress, uh, uh, table mm-hmm. attendant, whatever they want to call them in their own language, those people are treated like professionals. Yeah. That is their profession for life, and they are so proud of it. Whereas here, I mean, you know, people will come in and, okay, I'll work for you for a month or, <laughs> you know, whatever. But it's, it's that level of pride. And so, gosh. How come that was created that way? How come in, in uh, North America it's this way, whereas in Europe it's that way? Uh, Raj, in your country, in India, how would you describe customer service in general? Maybe you have some stories about... Whenever uh, we, in the restaurant and the hotels and the saloon, when we go, they treat it like a very royal, in the same very good way, the food they are serving food in a very elegant way, very happy way. They are asking you what do you want. And then if I went my saloon also, so they are treating, they are offering tea, coffee, and other stuff, and they will ask in a very good way. And the other services they are giving very nice way. So service is very, very, very brilliant and excellent service. And, the, and when we go departmental store also. So a lot of people, they are there helping. What do you want? How can I help you? How I assist you? So the, even, even the middle class area also and the higher class also in the super higher class, the services are very good. You feel very, very happy and satisfied. And even Love. sometimes you, you go to departmental store also, sometimes you have so much luggage, uh, some, some baggage. So they will help you. They push your trolley also. They, they give support also if like as a woman she can't carry so much stuff so they help so mm-hmm. service are very good mm-hmm. it does come back to the experience doesn't it mm-hmm. like the experience you have because it makes you happy it makes you feel good and and ultimately i mean of course that helps the business or the service provider but it, it just creates for such a better environment so, you know, another word you used earlier, Marion, was expectations. And um, I think that would be a good thing for each business that's listening to this to maybe do a bit of a, a study, a survey of their employees, you know, or not their, their customers, really. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what, what would you expect from, you know, a strategic branding company like Marion's or executive search or coaching training company like ours, right? What, what, what would be, what expectations do you have that would give you a great experience? I guess that would be a type of question Mm -hmm. to ask, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, you know what? I don't think 
we've asked that enough in my own company. I, I'm going to take this conversation and I'll apply it to Coaching and Leadership International because maybe the, 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 the client, the students who come to learn coaching and so on, maybe they have a different expectation than what we are willing to offer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And expectations, again, it goes way beyond service offerings too. It goes into the workplace and really making sure that the expectations are clear, they are communicated well, and that they're, they're matching, that there is an alignment. Yes, totally. Well, thank you for being here with me today, guys. Thank you. <laughs> that was- Can anybody out there hear me? Hear me?